On the line with me right now, I got my man, Sonny, from POD, multi-platinum artist, has impacted millions of people all over the world and also co-founded the movement, Whosoever's. Dude, I'm so stoked to have you on here. How are you doing right now, man? What's up, brother? I'm doing good. Good to see your face. (laughs) Yeah, man. Super stoked to have you on here, man. And, um, you know, you guys have had an amazing history, legacy in the music industry. You know, I know you guys have rocked stages and, you know, I got even to play a couple shows with you guys and you just rock it with confidence. But I, I heard a story that it didn't always start out that way. Like you were actually a bit of a shy guy at the beginning. Yeah. Is, is that true? And can you maybe share a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, some people are just naturally gifted or they're, you know, they don't have a shy bone whatsoever in them. You know, they're the ones that are always in the camera or especially now with social media and all that stuff, you're just, they're just the life of the party all the time. Me, you know, me, I've always been that guy kind of behind or if a camera comes around like, oh no, I'm good. Or, I'm just, I just don't want that kind of attention, you know? And so uh, when I got asked to be in a band that was like, that was new to me, you know, it was, it wasn't something that I ever thought of or dreamed of, but I had just given my life to the Lord. And um, this was kind of a way for me, I guess at the time I thought, you know what, giving my life to Jesus and trying the best that I can to live for him is people are going to, they think I'm crazy anyway. So why not just go for it? and do whatever it takes. And so I actually got asked to be in this band. My cousin, Wav, you know, drummer, Marcos, guitar yeah. player, they, they were believers and they were already doing it. You know, they were already out there and sharing kind of the message of love and, and God. And I was like, dude, let's just, you know, I'll go for it. And so yeah. I, I jumped in, just kind of abandoned everything, said, I, I'm down, wherever this leads. And then our first show, um, I think I actually – was reading the lyrics, like facing my drummer, like my back towards the crowd. And, yes. mo- and the crazy thing is most of it was my friends. So what it didn't even right, matter, right. but I, I, I just didn't have this confidence of like, you know, I know what I'm doing. I'm just, it, I've always felt that way. I still feel like sometimes like I'm in a position that I never really asked for and don't even really feel like I deserve but somehow, some way, you know, when, when I am doing it, I feel blessed and I feel like it's, it's just intimate. Now I don't even really see a crowd. I mean, I see yeah. your face see you I know but it's really personal for me just like you know this is between me and the Lord first and let's just go nuts and yeah just get reckless and then you know let God do his thing yeah just let's get crazy on it do you ever find (laughs) like um like uh with with like a new song that you haven't performed yet compared to like a song you've done like a million times or whatever done a lot like this like that nerves for the for the first song yeah it's nerves but I think we have such a broad catalog that like to do new songs is like super fun for me. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, I mean, not, yeah. not that the old songs aren't, but it's kind of like, you know, how many times have we played Youth of the Nation or Alive? You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's it's new every time. It's awesome. But it's almost like, um, you know, you just kind of know it. It's like muscle Whereas, memory. Yes. And so so I think with the new songs, it's more of a challenge. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or, or what can we make this? Or, or yeah. not only that, more of the excitement of like, how are people going to receive it? Like, yeah, yeah grooving like what what is it so you know it's new it's fresh that's all yeah no totally man totally that's <laughs> awesome can you share a time um maybe specifically about music or it could be could be anything where you thought about quitting where you're just like you know what like i'm done with this and but then you didn't quit and you kept on fighting because we're always talking about mm-hmm. you know fighting for your dreams here and a fighter is that someone never fails a fighter is someone yeah. never quits and so i'm sure you've got um some stories <laughs> or a story yeah dude uh, t- today you know yeah <laughs> like a, i want to quit today <laughs> i feel you man I feel every, you. every day bro i mean every you know th- we dude i've been so super blessed i mean we've been going on almost 30 years and like I never thought that we would leave San Diego, California. So every new opportunity, every new level was always new and fresh and exciting. And, you know, you go into this with the right heart and intentions and do, but it's a journey. You know, you don't, you go in and thinking like it's, dude, you got this. It's going to be a certain way. We got this, but dude, there's so much, so much more out there. And now everything is put to test, dude. You know, everything from your friendships to, you know, your relationships to your your faith, all these things, man, it's tried yeah. and tested throughout the journey. And, you know, I know for for me, speaking for myself, the one thing, and like we, we spoke earlier, I knew that I knew that I knew in the beginning, I just wanted, I didn't know what I was doing. 
I just wanted to scream in somebody's face. This is yeah. what the Lord has done for me. Yeah. Yeah. My life. Look at, look at the compassion that, that Christ has had in my life. And, and I don't have it figured out. I'm not this religious person. I'm not this scholar, but I do know what God has done for me in my life personally. And, and sure, I'll take that microphone and scream and yell and do yeah. it, you know? Yeah. And so that's always been my number one heart's intention. But, you know, as you go and you, dude, we sold lots of records and all of a sudden, you know, we're one of the biggest bands out there. It's like, dude, you're learning as you're going. And so even then there was, even when we were still kind of on top of the world, there was a time when I just had to stop and take a break because I realized that, dude, this is getting, it's kind of getting out of hand. Am I still that same kid? Right. So right. that same kid in the beginning that said, dude, give yeah. me that mic. I just want to tell the world about Jesus. Yeah. Like I had to check my own heart. And so yeah, ended up taking some time. And, but even now, you know, I, I still question all the time, Lord, if it's not, if this is not what I'm supposed to be doing, then like, I, I don't need to be here. So it's just, it's just yeah. always a, not, not necessarily a questioning, but always just wanting to meet for me in the purest form to just be where I believe God has me in my life. And, and, and I've said this before, it's like, I, I don't, I don't need to be in a band. You know, I, I don't need to be in the music industry, but I believe that I've been here for a reason. I've made so yeah. many friends. I've seen God work in so many ways. And there's a side of me that, you know, I, I just want to be available. If God yeah. is still doing something, yeah. so be it. But at yeah. the same time, you know, if you're talking about one specific time, I remember being in, in Brazil for the first time and questioning, like, dude, am I still supposed to be doing this? And I remember being on stage and I don't speak Portuguese. So it's like, you know what? I know that. I can't flatter anybody with my words because I don't speak the language. Yeah. All I really do have is the music and the spirit that I believe is here, the spirit of God that I believe is here. And that's all I have. So yeah. I remember being on the side of the stage praying, God, if, if you're not going to show up, you know, or if I need to know that you're here. And if not, I don't want to waste, I don't want to waste these. First, I don't want to waste God's time. Yeah. I don't want to waste these people's time. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then I don't want to waste my family's time because I miss them and I want to go home. And yeah, so if I'm yeah. here halfway across the world for no reason, then I don't want to be here. And I remember just asking God, please just show up. Boom. I can't, I can't do anything. I can't, all I could do is just give, sing the songs that, that, that I believe you've given me in this band and, and hope and pray that you do something. And I remember being up there and watching people that probably would don't even speak English, just bawling their eyes out. And then like just making eye contact with them yeah. and feeling like the spirit of God was there. And I was just yeah. like, all right, one more show. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, I love that, man. There was a time uh, I wasn't feeling it one night. Maybe I was missing home. I don't know what it was, but I remember like tearing up during a song yeah. and it just being a powerful Always. show and just kind of glad I pushed through that um, that hard time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Bro. What advice would you have for maybe people or couples or, you know, just anyone out there that are thinking about giving up on their, on their dreams or their, or their marriage? Like what, what would you say to them? I know you speak to people all the time and sometimes it's one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes it's, you know, just out there from yeah. stage. But dude, I mean, I know it's always easier said than done, but you can't, you can't give up. Yeah. You know I mean? that, And I think that's where faith comes in because then you realize that, dude, I am, I'm tired, I'm weary, I'm beat up, I'm just, I'm wrecked. But I also know that I'm not doing this in my own strength because I know yeah. that God, God is there. And if yeah. I have that faith and that confidence and that hope that I know God is in my life, dude, then I know that God's will is for me to get through this. I just yeah. gotta, I know, and I know he's my strength. And sometimes you feel, like I said, there's no fault for feeling defeated or feeling empty at times or just busted. But yeah, you either believe that God is good or you don't. And you either believe that is he's true to his word and that his promises yeah. are real. And then, and then because they are, and you know that and believe that you're like, all right, one more step, yeah. one more step. Oh, yeah. you know what? If, if, if this is my wife and God gave my wife, or this is my husband and this is from the Lord, I got to fight for this. Or, you know what? This is what I believe is true is right. And I'm not going to yeah. compromise. Then I'm going to go for it. And God will see you through it. You yeah. know? And then, and sometimes it's just, you know, whenever it's the Lord's will and, and you you just kind of get rid of yourself and say, God, I'm giving this to you. God, he will, it will show himself, you know, but yeah. sometimes we get God out of the way and we say, well, this is God's will, but it's really what I want to do. And yeah. so you'll find a lot of failures in that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Once you can get rid of yourself, then you're like, God, do, do what you want to do. Yeah. And, and then we kind of just learn and, and love to just fall in place and watch God do his thing. So 
always hang on. Sure. Lord, you know, good, you man. know that like anybody says, yep. I mean, the, the scripture says that joy comes in the morning. So if you can make mm. it through the night, <laughs> yeah, make it through the night and, and God promise you that joy comes in the morning. Yeah. I always say, man, sometimes you just need to go to sleep. Just shut everything <laughs> off and just, just go to sleep. You're just tired. Yo, it's afternoon. Like, I know. Yeah. I just need this day to end. <laughs> <laughs> this is a question. Um, Regarding, I think it was OzFest that I heard you guys performed at and you shared Jesus, and which is like totally gangster. And I just kind of want to know, like, you know, the story behind that. What was going through your mind? The reactions? Like, like that's just so gangster, dude. And I just want to hear about that. I think, you know, I think when we first started off, and I mean, obviously, we had been doing it for quite some time before we got signed and then we went on to OzFest, but... POD has always had that gangster mentality where it was like, truthfully, like, what, what are they going to do to us? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so, and even when I first got saved, it was always like, oh, dude, I'm, you know, you kind of just think, well, I'm in, I'm in the Jesus gang now. And so you have this mentality when then you realize that, well, this isn't really the philosophy of Jesus. Like I need to humble myself. I need to, I need to love and, you know, I need to, to do these things instead of these things. And so yeah. you just kind of learn. But when it came to standing up or believing what we believed, you know, we were in these arenas and we had these platforms where it wasn't necessarily, I never saw it as like preaching or condemning, but it was yeah. more like, you know, I also, I just thought it was, dude, I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you what I know to, to be real in my heart. And, and it's, yeah. it's because God loves you. You know, and a lot of times, you know, there's people that say, yeah, dude, I'd love to hear what you have. But then there would be people that it's like flipping us off in the form of a cross or whatever, you know, yeah. dudes were flipping you off. And so, Again, without trying to be mad, because I know, you know, I'm there because I love these people and I know yeah. God loves them. But at the same time, it was more like, dude, I'm not going to like that doesn't that doesn't scare me. You know what I mean? Like if you yeah. got something to say, dude, please step up, step yeah. up to this stage or dude, I remember calling people out, dude, just being like, you're a, you're a coward. You know, I mean, obviously <laughs> you don't you want to do it in love, but there was people yeah. that were just so. And then then, then you, it yeah. finally crossed the line where like they're not just trying they're not just mad. It's like, dude, they, they hate, this guy hates me or he hates God. And so even though I still, I should still love him or God still loves him, but it was more like, dude, jump up. If you got something to say, say it, yeah. dude. Don't flip yeah. me off from a, from the distance and yeah. then walk away. Cause I'm not going yeah, away. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. not, I'm not saying that I'm going to beat you up with the gospel, but it's like, dude, you're, that doesn't, that doesn't scare us. It yeah. might scare most people where the moment they're like, get that out of my face and out of here. And then most, you know, yeah. Christians, whatever, might run in terror or fear. Yeah. Where it's yeah. like, dude, we're not running from you. Like, we earned our way yeah. up on the stage. God put us here. Yeah. And again, everything in love, everything in exactly. love. But there's a point where it's like, dude, you are you don't intimidate us. You're not scaring us off the stage. And at some point, you're just going to hear what we have to say. And, awesome. and, and if you choose to walk away, you choose to walk away. That's fine. But, 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 but you doing what you're doing or trying to mock us from stage, we're not getting off the stage. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, I love that, man. It's like being real and it's loving people at the same time, but like not backing down. Like, you know, yeah. it's, it's changed your life. Of course you're going to share it. And like, no matter what, I had a guy email me the other day because he, he got on my email list for manifest and there's these automatic emails mm -hmm. that go out. And I guess there was one that talked about God or Jesus. And he responded back like, get this Jesus stuff out of my inbox oh, yeah. or whatever. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and I responded back to the guy and I was just like, Hey dude, wasn't trying to offend you or whatever, but like, right. Oh, oh good. You know? And uh, he was, and he responded back. He's like, Oh, it's okay, man. I was drunk when I wrote that. And I was just oh, like, geez. Oh my gosh. So, you never know what people are, are going through. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, dude, that's it. Right. Like they're, they're fighting yeah. the battle and they're fighting. Yeah. You know, and that's just what they're going through. That's what yeah. these really kind of people, well, man. There, thanks. There's, there's, there's times where I was just, I'm sorry. There, no, there's times good. where I, I'm like ready to call this dude or I might even call him off on stage. And then, and then all of a sudden you realize in the heat of the moment that, Oh dude, I'm, I, I don't want to like scare this dude or push him <laughs> away. Like I didn't come here for that. I came here to love him, you know, to the Lord. And then yeah. there's times where, you know, even Toby gets to the end of the song, like say alive or something. And I'll be like, yeah. Hey, you know, point out the dude or call him out. And then I'll be like, I love you, dude. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to let him know, like, like, dude, we're all in the rock and roll spirit here and everything's yeah, going on. Dude, yeah. All said and done, it comes down to it. I love you, dude. And this song's for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Boom. Dude, I love that. Yeah, no, straight up, man. Straight up. I, I, lo I love that, man. 
Well, dude, that's, that's awesome. Do you, do you have um, a, a, like maybe a few more to ask a, just a couple questions? I coach some like artists and musicians. Could I just ask you maybe a few, like some advice oh, thing for them? For sure, dude. Um, awesome. Well, uh, again, hey guys, I got my man, uh, Sonny from POD here. And dude, I just wanted to like ask you, like you've really been in the label system, I would say, and been, been signed and all that stuff. And what, what would you say, like advice for artists that, you know, want to get out there and get their music out there? Would you say go the label route or, or indie or how would you, what would you say to an artist coming up now, like trying to just break out and, you know? we're in different seasons right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when we were first starting up and we we did everything independently and we, I think we went as far as we can go, but we didn't have the tools that you have today. Everything is social media driven. Everything is face to face. Now, you know, back then we were doing stuff, you know, mailing, you know, if you got a, a mailing list, it was an actual letter and, you know, pen and paper. Wow. And so it's, it, it's different. So, um, I think for the independent artists, it's, it is so much easier to do it on your own. And at the end of the day, you want to be able to keep, you know, what you own, your rights, and then yeah. whatever money can be made, that should be going into your pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean? And unfortunately for POD, you know, we signed to a label and, you know, there was a lot of ups and downs in that. But even now, you know, some our biggest records, you know, if you were to look at the contract, we, we probably still have, we're pro even after millions of records sold, we're still recouping. Like that makes right. no sense. That you know, um, that makes no sense. You could sell millions of records and yet, you know, you're recouping, who knows, who knows what they wrote down. Right. Uh, right. You know that you're In recouping gas thing. for, for some CEOs, you know, yeah. Mercedes Benz that he was driving, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's tough. If you can do it on your own, do it. And, and it just depends on where you're trying to go. Sometimes people will sign because it really is, you got to see it as a bank that, you know, Maybe not so much now, but even before, if like the, the the label has the money and they have the bank and they're willing to say, here, here you go, here's a loan, but you got, you'll have to pay it back. So, yeah. and before it's kind of like they controlled, you know, all the things that social media does now and all these platforms to release your music. If we have everything like that online now and, and you might as well just cut out the, the, yeah. the big guy and work with the, the smaller guys and just get your stuff out. And then at the end of the day, you have your control and you can support your family through it. Yeah, because we have all the same tools. It's kind of like the playing field is leveled. Like before, it was kind of like distribution, and they had that whole. They had it all. And you had to. I'm still learning that. I'm still learning that myself. Like I was just <laughs> asking a question, like, dude, do we make money through streaming? You're telling me that people are, you know, millions and millions of people are streaming PODs. Like, how come I'm not seeing a check? Yeah. You know, yeah. how come I'm not? Yeah. How come my band's not seeing anything? Yeah. Well, that's because yeah. if there is any pennies that come through them streaming, it's going and it's recouping off of whatever we've done in right. the past. It's like, oh. right. yeah. Even new music, you're like, dude, yeah. what's the point of putting out new music? And yeah. And so I mean, that's honestly that's why we tour. It's like, dude, you make money off touring, but right. You know how hard it is. Well, it's hard, it's hard. It's hard to do. Yeah. No, it is. It's definitely. It's definitely trickier now, man. And and. You know, we signed with Tooth and Nail, and I think you guys had a record with them or whatever. Um, and uh, I, we kind of pulled away and started releasing our our own records mm -hmm. um, for a while now, which is which has been great. But again, it's not having that system or that bank like yeah. you were like you were talking about. Um, you you talked about when you guys went indie. Uh, or you were indie for a while and you went mm -hmm. as far as you could go. And again, this is just a story. I, I don't know if I read it or I heard it, and I just want to know yeah. your 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 talk about it. Um, I heard you guys like were like I don't know you sold like maybe fifty thousand records. I don't know what it was, but you're like living out of your car or something <laughs> like that. And then you guys literally signed like some big contractor. There's some story where you guys were like kind of rough in it, like up yeah. to the point of making it. You know, is well, yeah, yeah. I I see what you say. Well, I mean, we were always we were never like full time you know, as a band, we would, we would, we all worked. And then we would, you know, there was opportunities in the summer to jump in a, you know, a broken down van and go and play wherever they'd let us play. So we would, we would take our, basically our vacation time to go and, and play. And then there finally became, became a season where it's like, dude, you guys are being asked to play shows like throughout the year. So it really came down to a point where it's like, dude, do we believe in what we're doing? And we were seeing the fruit. We were, we were believing it. And then it was like, dude, let's, we all quit our jobs and out of faith and said, dude, let's just go for it. And so it was because the people, it was, you know, the, the CDs or the, the tapes at the time, you know, or, or yeah. our t-shirts, 
whatever our merch, you know, that's what got us gas to get to the next place. You know, that's what we would send home from, you know, from the bank, just whatever, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks that we'd make on the road. And we were living like that. And I think what you might be referring to though, is like, we were always hustling and struggling, but I think because, you know, so many years ago with our tattoos and our music, we were always considered, we were never considered Christian enough. You know, we, we were never really a part of that, that, that group. Right. 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 So it was kind of a clear calling for us. Like, well, well, if the, I mean, I didn't know that there was a Christian industry yet. Anyway, I didn't know there was, I yeah, thought yeah. it was all just music for everybody. Yeah. You can listen to whatever you want. And so once we realized that there is Christian music, there's a Christian industry and we realized that they really didn't want nothing to do with us. We, we weren't bitter. We were, that was fine. We just kept playing and doing our stuff. And then I think the kind of more popular we got, we finally did start getting, um, uh, offers from labels and a lot of them were some of the bigger Christian labels but at that time we were like I remember praying and thinking it was like it's not supposed to be this way like I, I want to wait out I want to wait for like whatever God's doing we've been doing it on our own independently let's just wait you guys were never there for the last six seven years why why should we jump into it now and wasn't that hard sudden, wasn't that hard like oh it's hard like, because we're hard? like dude you, I'm hope we're hoping like dude let's get a check let's get paid maybe you know whatever maybe maybe this is what we're supposed to do but it was just that feeling and, and the believing that god has something yeah. different and something yeah. something better and something that yeah. is more might be mainstream or might be where the direction we're headed and so we waited out just kept doing what we were doing independently and then finally we signed to it atlantic records and that was right. huge at the time because yeah. no there were no christian artists that were signed to these major labels it was all in-house stuff you know yeah yeah. So that was like, a, that was, that was huge for, for, for just yeah. the, the industry in general. And it's just so powerful. The, the idea of like waiting, you know what I mean? Cause a lot of artists, yeah. like they, we, we, we want things now, like, and you know, and, and, and if we didn't wait, it's like, man, like there's a, a bigger yeah. opportunity in the front. Well, Hey, one more yeah. question for you, just for, for artists again, like mm-hmm. as far as like songwriting and stuff and like hits and stuff, cause you guys had some massive hits, like, um, like what advice would you would you give to artists with that? Like, did you go in knowing that like Alive was gonna be as big as it was or any of the other songs? Like no. like <laughs> just they're just song like they're just I mean songs. like you, you know, you have a feeling and you're like, wow, this is that, that feels good. This this is special, this feels good. But then you can also look at uh, you know a lot of your songs and be like, Man, it feels good. Like why we, you're doing it, it feels right, it feels good, but I think that was just a season for us. I think when we put out Fundamental Elements of Southtown and and all of a sudden, like, dude, that album went platinum. It's like, even the label wasn't expecting that. I think yeah. in their minds, they were still like, these are those Christian guys, whatever, just let whatever happens. And all of a sudden, it was because of the people. It was because of the, the real fans that were like, dude, this is my band. I'm supporting them. I see yeah. what they're doing. You know, and it was like, they were making head, they were making, they were making noise. And back then it was all MTV TRL. You had to call in on the phone. Like now it's not like text, vote for this guy and text him. Back then it's like there were kids all around the United States that were waiting in their time zones for the for that one hour that they can call and say, POD's my band, I'm voting for them. Yeah, and yeah. so all of a sudden, because of that power of, of, the, of, of the voice, MTV was forced to play our video. You know, then, then the labels were like, dude, these guys are onto something. Once we started selling records, then it was like there's something there's something here to, to what these guys are doing. You yeah. Know what I mean? Well, the war, the warriors, right. Isn't that the warriors? Guys, dude. Yeah. yeah. And that, there's, there's power in that too. Like calling your, your tribe, like that's your tribe. That's your, your yeah. family, right? That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. That's what we want to do now. It's like, if we can just get people united together, it's like we can, we can move mountains, dude. If you just stop arguing each other about certain things, yeah, yeah we sure. can get through this. Yeah. Thanks for hanging, man.